Continuing on with my quest for some weedless, uh, large, soft plastic lures, I want to show you how I created this split tail grub. Uh, a lot of grubs that you see will have a, a flat tail that's uh, even with where you want to pour the bait. But I want to show you a way of doing it where you can center the tail perfectly inside the bait and then make a split mold using the high strength two uh, to make a, a perfect mold for it. So the way you have to do this first is you have to sculpt the tail and the body separately because it's really difficult to get it centered, uh, the tail centered in the soft clay before you bake it. So we bake these two separately, uh, sanded them, cleaned them up, used a hacksaw blade to basically cut out uh, the slot where the tail is gonna fit uh, perfectly into. Then we trim and sand down the tail uh, where it's gonna connect to the body. Put a little bit of super glue in there and glue the tail into that slot so we know it's gonna be perfectly centered. Use a little accelerator and kick that off quick uh, once that's hardened, then we come back with more sculpting and we just seam the tail to the body. We smooth that out as good as we can and then we simply rebake that uh, to harden it. Now we have the tail perfectly centered into the body and we go and refinish that. We re sand that seam down so it's nice and smooth and cosmetic. Now we're ready to make our split mold. A split mold is basically a one-piece mold uh, where uh, it'll open like a book uh, in an area where we need to uh, relieve uh, undercuts or we need to uh, relieve an area where we need the material to flow. This tail is really, really thin, so in order for the alumisol to flow into that uh, thin area without cooling too fast, it would be very, very difficult. So what we do is we use some uh, packaging tape and we simply tape one side of the tail uh, to not allow the silicone to go underneath the tail. So then when we cut to the tail that entire area will split open. So we make a simple one piece mold using corrugated plastic. Uh, we increase the height of it with a little bit of duct tape just because the corrugated wasn't tall enough. We mix up our high strength two silicone rubber and we simply pour it uh, around our master. Here you'll see the silicone actually flow around the tape, not allowing it to go in between the tail. So when the rubber cures, we demold it, uh, remove the duct tape, and then all we have to do is simply cut to the tail and the entire mold will fall open or split open. So we start taking out the sculpey and it's going gonna, it's gonna to break because it's brittle, but that's not a problem because we, need, we already have a good mold of it now. So we simply cut around the outside edge of the mold to the tail and you can see how the mold just simply splits right open because the tape did not allow the silicone uh, to adhere uh, in between the tail. So we finish splitting the mold open so we have a nice easy way to pour it. We heat up our alumisol, open the mold up to fill the, the detail in the tail, uh, especially where the two fins split because it's really thin down there. Then we simply hold a, that area closed and fill up the base of the tail as well as the body. You can use the same process for making like bulldogs, uh, other big tail baits simply using a split mold. Once the alumisol cools, gently remove the tail and then come back and remove the body. You'll see quite a bit of flash where the tape was that can easily be trimmed to give you your split tail grub. The idea with this was uh, to put it on a big saltwater jig head. This is a big uh, two or four ounce jig head, uh, Pac-Man style that G&H Lures down in uh, the Carolinas makes. And then here you can see it rigged uh, weightless and weedless. Uh, so it's a versatile bait, has a lot of action, and I think it'll be a lot of fun to fish.